You're welcome to Open Heaven's Devotional Commentary, a guide to a close fellowship with God. I'm Salam Manager Haruna, your host. We are glad to have you. Hello, good day, and thank you for joining us today again. Open Heaven is written by our Father and the Lord, Pastor E. E. Adeboe, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. This commentary intends to bring insights to God's word by the help of the Holy Spirit. Today's date is Monday, the 15th day of April 2024, and our topic for today says, Stop Taking Nonsense. Let us pray. Our dear faithful Father, we thank you for your love over us. Thank you, Lord, because you have been so good and kind. You have been so merciful. You have been so good to us. If we want to speak of your goodness, Lord, we can never exhaust them. Today we come before you again acknowledging you as the doer of all of this and we are asking that you take all the glory in Jesus' name. We have gathered before you again to receive of your word. We are asking today that your word will come to us with simplicity and power. Minister to us. Teach us that which you have for us this day. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our memory verse for today is from the book of Matthew chapter 21 verse 12. Matthew 21 verse 12 reads, And Jesus went into the temple of God, and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves. Matthew chapter 21 verse 12. Our text for today is from the book of Acts chapter 13. With reading from verse 5 to verse 12. Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 5 to verse 12, reads And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle, the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew whose name was by Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. But Elymas the sorcerer, for so, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him, and said, O full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Acts chapter 13, reading from verse 5 to verse 12. God bless the reading of his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more says stop taking nonsense. And in the body of our devotional for today, our Father and the Lord says to us that there are many Christians who say that they do not take nonsense from anybody. However, these same people take nonsense from the devil. Whether you take nonsense from people or not is not very important. What is most important is that you do not take nonsense from the devil. The Bible says, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Will you sit around and let him come and devour you? You should stand your ground against him and set his tail on fire so that he can run far away from you. One of my daughters shared a testimony some time ago. Her child was sick and they took the child to the hospital. On getting there, the doctor said that there was nothing he could do to save the child. The woman asked 
In that case, can you refer us to another hospital? The doctor referred them and on their way, they got stuck in a terrible traffic jam. While in the traffic jam, the child died. The woman said, I am not going to take this. And after five hours on the road, she suddenly had a brain wave. She said, at least my father will call his God and his God will answer. I will call on the God of my father and I even have a handkerchief that he once prayed over. She laid the handkerchief on the child, called the child's name and commanded him to come back to life. The child jerked awake and there was no need to go to the hospital anymore. When you are determined not to let something evil happen, your prayers will be more fervent than usual. There are probably things in your life that the devil has been using to torment you. These things will only stop when you become determined not to take any nonsense from him again. If you have been praying gentle prayers concerning these things, it is time to use your authority in Christ and start issuing commands in your prayers. You must, however, submit yourself to God first before you can successfully stand up to the devil. James chapter 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. If you are sure of your right standing with God, when you resist the devil, he will run away from you. Stop taking nonsense from him. God bless his word to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our topic for today once more says stop taking nonsense. In the closing part of our study for today, our Father and the Lord read from James chapter 4 verse 7, which tells us, Submit yourself therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. When the year started, many people started with the slogan, No grief for anybody. Meaning to say that, do not give room to anyone who would oppress you or try to take undue advantage of you. In today's study, our Father and the Lord reminds us that many of us would be quick to resist others when they try to oppress us. However, we are made to understand in today's study that our main adversary is the devil. He is the one we should resist by all means. Our topic for today says stop taking nonsense. What this means is that nonsense will surely come and that is inevitable. However, we have the capacity to ensure that we never take it. Scripture tells us that our adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It is true that you may not be able to stop him from going around, but there is a saying that you may not be able to stop a bird from flying over you, but you can definitely stop it from perching on your head. The enemy is a cheat and he does not even intend to give to you what he knows rightly belongs to you. He likes the kinds of believers that would always let him have his way. He gives you the kind of treatment that you allow him to give to you. He gives you that kind of treatment that you think you deserve. If you are comfortable and maybe even content with what he offers to you after cheating you, then he continues to operate with you that way. But then, when you resist him and you demand what is rightfully yours, you will also get it. I was speaking with a colleague recently at the office and she was mentioning to me how one time recently she was feeling terrible in her body. She was not feeling well. So she was just managing herself to see how she could probably get better. And instead of getting better, it grew worse. She said suddenly it just occurred to her that she couldn't be suffering this way. She rebuked the enemy and that was the end of it. In today's study, our Father in the Lord tells us that if you have been praying gentle prayers concerning things that you have been trusting God for, it is time for you to use your authority in Christ and start issuing commands in your prayers. Sometimes you just need to get spiritually angry. As long as you continue to remain normal and you keep petting the situation, it only continues to grow bigger. The enemy is not a respecter of your emotions. He will not treat you better because he thinks that you have cried a lot and you deserve better. 
so he should have mercy on you. Scripture tells us to resist him. That is when he will flee. Hallelujah. Scripture tells us that once upon a time, the disciples were upon the sea in a boat and there was a storm. It tells us that the disciples were afraid. They were panicking. But did that solve the problem? No. They had to go and wake our Lord Jesus Christ who was sound asleep at the back of the boat. It even says he was using a pillow. Hallelujah. In Mark chapter 4 verse 39, scripture tells us, And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. What happened next is amazing. Scripture tells us, And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. Hallelujah. I am praying for anyone here who may be facing one challenge or the other, who may be facing the storms of life. In the name of Jesus, peace be still. I would like us at this point right now to bow our heads and become aggressive in the spirit. It is not time to pamper that issue. Tell the Lord today that particular situation, that condition that you want him to intervene in. Begin to make decrees and declare that let those manipulations, everything that is not of God in your life, cease now in the name of Jesus. Begin to tell the enemy that enough is enough. That pain that has existed for so long, let it come to an end today. That challenge that has been marking register for a long time, let it come to an end now in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that has made you lose sleep, whatever it is that has made you agitated, in the name of Jesus, let it cease and let it end now in the name of Jesus. Tell the enemy, say in the name of Jesus, my life is a military zone, keep off. Leave this place and never return again in the name of Jesus. Call the name of that thing that you want to live your life right now. Is it a sickness that you have been battling with? Mention its name and say, live now in the name of Jesus. Is it a particular challenge? Something you cannot even tell someone else. The Lord is listening now. Call that thing by its name and say, live right now in the name of Jesus. Begin to declare your freedom. Say, I am free in the name of Jesus. Worship the Lord. Thank him and give him praise for answers to prayers. Father, we are grateful. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Our dear Father, we give you thanks and we worship you, King of glory. Thank you for your word today that reminds us that we are not to take nonsense from the enemy. We ask, O Lord, that you would grant us the grace to resist the enemy wherever he shows up his face in our lives and to receive the victory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. We have an action point in today's study that tells us, command the devil to take his hands off your life and everything that concerns you now. We declare in the name of Jesus that the works of the enemy cease operation in our lives from this moment moving forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. We have in our Bible in one year reading plan for today to read from the book of 1 Kings chapter 19 down to chapter 20. We want to thank you and appreciate you for joining us today. God bless you. If you'd love to speak to someone or to receive updates like this sent to you daily, please do well to send a WhatsApp or Telegram message to plus 234-80-986-11226. Do well also to like, share, comment and subscribe to our various platforms available. Our hymn for today is the hymn 24 of our Open Heavens devotional. We'll be singing that wonderful name. Have a beautiful week ahead filled with testimonies of great victories. See you tomorrow again by God's grace. God bless you and bye for now. Jesus, that wonderful name. Jesus, that wonderful name.
I believe today's devotional blessed you. We are always glad to hear from you. So leave us a comment. Let us know how this has blessed you. Also remember to follow us on all our social media handles to get more like this. You can share this with someone to bless them too. We gladly look forward to seeing you tomorrow again. Have a fulfilling day ahead. God bless you.